I was a hippie doctor uh, in, in Victoria and Bill Choiquette was a hippie doctor in Salt Spring. The hippies sort of went back to work and went back to school. Oh, yeah. And in the late 70s, uh, well past the hippie era, uh, patients okay. came in with uh, chronic alcohol problems and mental health issues. Joe would come into the hospital and he would read my notes, first of all, as a psych nurse, and, um, and then he would actually also um, um, want me to know this person. Not, not just this patient that's now being admitted because they've got bizarre behaviors or something's going wrong. This is this fine, splendid man. Both of us um, had a similar approach to the patients that we saw. The, uh, we both are, are interested in them mm -hmm. and uh, generally interested more than just seeing somebody as a problem to, to solve. Mm -hmm. And um, both of us are really empathetic, inter meaning we're interested in their feelings and, and what their thoughts and, and, and their dreams are and, and their hopes. And without seeing that, all, all you're looking at is a person who has this, this psych psychiatric problem. The, the things I remember most are the early years, or was early years when him and I would go into an abandoned building or to an alley because somebody was uh, either dying or needing medical help in, in that alley or, dry, or building. Remember uh, going into a, uh, a building one time with uh, this girl was bleeding in there quite badly and a doctor, the doc was with me and how he took time to listen to her. Just listen to her. And after a while of listening, he then said to her, would you like me to call an ambulance? Total respect of the person in front of him. There's something that um, unites uh, human beings that's beyond your social station. It's about being a human being. And I think that Joe uh, understands that in a deep and organic way. Uh, in a natural way, and uh, I think that rubs off on me and, and lots of uh, people he's dealt with, lots of physicians he's dealt with. I have to say he's one of the most genuine people that I've met. Um, one of the things that really strikes me about him is that he is genuinely interested in every person that he meets. People come back to him because of his non-judgmental attitude, um, and because he really, like I said, he's interested. It's like getting together with an old friend and talking about things that you have in common and he remembers everything about everybody. I just want you to know, Dr. Hager, that you've been a very special man in my life. I still really feel that, that you're, going, you're not going to be working in the area knowing that you were my doctor for so many years. So I'm 56 right now, so, you know, 15, and that's a long time. A long time, and I don't think you can ever find another doctor as you, Dr. Haggard. And I'm very honored to be here and very honored to speak. He doesn't put a lot of expectations on people. He just accepts them where they are with mm -hmm. loving and caring arms. If more people treated each other that way, where do you think we'd be? Wow. The world would smell like a bunch of roses, I must say. Yeah, it would be a really great, great place. A lot of us feel a lot of emotion. Um, because I think it, if you were listening to people today, you would see just how much Joe is loved. And, uh, and that, doesn't, that extends not only to, to our clients, but it also extends to our staff. I think he's an inspiration for all of us. As I was looking for, for words to describe him, uh, I would also say stubborn. And uh, his stubbornness comes out in the most, in the most positive ways. Uh, because he never gives up. He never gives up on, on a patient. Uh, he never gives up on, on uh, trying to make somebody's life that much better. There's no question that we, we shall miss him. Uh, we shall expect to, to see him. Uh, uh, um, we always know that we can call out Joe. It sounds almost, in a sense, as if he'll still be there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, of course, we, we know that at some point we're going to have a, jo a Joe Hagen building. That event last Thursday was all about two hearts meeting mm -hmm. and that met in, in that practice all, yeah. all, all over the years. It's close to impossible to treat people with mental health issues and substance use, etc. And if they don't have adequate housing, 
that's uh, in support of housing too. We're lucky because we have a we have in that Kool Aid clinic, the medical clinic. We have a whole group of, of, of physicians, and nurses, and nurse practitioners, and counselors, and even the staff up at the front, who are all really interested in the people.